I haven't been in the workshop much recently. First of all, there were decorators in and I couldn't actually reach the workshop. And then I had some trouble standing up for any period of time. And that wasn't just the beer. My knees were giving me some trouble. So here we are at the kitchen table, going to look at a little item to do with magnets, which is another reason for being at the kitchen table. You don't want to be playing with neodymium magnets on a steel saw table or on a workbench littered with bits of screws and rods and so forth. I thought I'd do a little item on the levitating pen. Now, it's out there on many videos on YouTube, but usually from a physics point of view rather than a workshopping point of view. And also, there's very little hard information about how you orient the magnets in the levitating pen. Now, I don't turn pens on the lathe, I don't have a lathe anymore, uh, but for those people who are, do uh, turn pens, this might be an interesting thing to make. Uh, it also makes an interesting toy as well. My favourite video showing the various varieties of this kind of toy is Tim Rowett's I'll, uh, Grand Illusions. I'll put a link down below. One of the questions that somewhat surprisingly isn't answered particularly clearly on the science and physics videos is the orientation and the placement of the magnets in terms of their poles. Now these are all disc magnets, as indeed are the magnets on the pen, and they have their poles on their circular faces. You might remember another video I did where I wanted the poles to be on the cylindrical sides, but no, these are the more ordinary, more commonly found disc magnets where the poles are on the faces. Now if you think about it, the magnets on the pen here must exhibit symmetry of their fields. Otherwise, in one orientation it would be levitated and in another it wouldn't. And you wouldn't be able to spin the pen or the toy, whichever you choose to make. So these magnets here must have their faces on the long axis of the pen. If these were face up, then there would be a neutral effect because you'd have a north pole and a south pole above either a north pole or a south pole and that's not going to levitate. You want these the same way around so that they either repel like that or attract. And if we want the force to be repulsive, then these are all going to have to be the same way around. So if that is a North Pole, and I don't know, then that must be a North Pole and that must be a North Pole. Same thing over here. That must be a North Pole, that must be a North Pole, and that must be a North Pole. You could argue that it didn't matter. As long as those three were the same, and those three were the same, it would work. The thing is, though, at rest, it would exhibit some peculiar behaviour if these three were one way round and these three were another way round. So, to summarise, all the magnets have their circular faces oriented to the long axis of the pen, and they all have their north poles at the same side. Here, 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 and here. Now, if you come to do this as a pen turner, you'll want ring magnets rather than disc magnets. You'll want some kind of ballpoint refill going through the holes in the ring magnets. You really have to use a ballpoint, you can't use a pencil. Uh, a pencil would wear down and the geometry would change, particularly the geometry of the support over here, which we'll be talking about in a moment. So what about the distances apart? Well, the first thing to establish is these two magnets here. And if you're making a pen, they'll probably be a little bit closer than these, because, as I said, you'll have a refill running through the centre and it'll poke out a bit here and it'll poke out a bit here. And having set this distance, then you make these distances here exactly the same. And that way you've got the maximum repulsion and the maximum symmetry of repulsion. What about this distance here? Well, you'll have to do some experimenting. Let's have a look at the fields. Here are the magnets and the lines of force will be doing this, but the effect of that will be to give these ovoid surfaces of equal repulsion. So let's have a look at those ovoids. 
and these represent the repulsive force that just about balances the weight of the magnet. And what you're trying to arrange is that there is this valley here, and that will permit you to balance the pen in the valley. I won't let go of it, but that is just about balanced there. So if these are close together, you won't have enough of a valley, and if they're too far apart, the valley will be too far down. So a little bit of experimenting, either with some clever screw advances or something, or just good old blue tack here, or hot melt glue, a bit of experimenting will tell you where that is. So let's have another look at this. You can arrange that there's a valley in this axis, but in this axis there will be a hilltop. So when you place your pen here, it will nestle nicely in there, but it won't nestle that way. It will want to fall off, either over there or over there. And the trick is that you balance it such that it is just falling off, but there's something here. And the classic thing to put over here is something hard and shiny like a mirror. So the point of the ball refill will rest against a hard shiny surface here, a mirror. And as the magnet tries to fall off down here, it meets the mirror which holds it where you want it. Now it's not much of an illusion when you can actually see the magnets. And also there's a danger that you might drop your pen the wrong way around and these magnets smack into these magnets. And you don't really want to smack these magnets together. Uh, there's quite a bit of force holding them together and you don't want them shattering. So you need some kind of tray. Uh, I just roughed this out using the table saw and the blade at an angle, but doing it properly you'd want some kind of continuous curve in here. I'm not quite sure how you would do that. With these very strong magnets, probably if you were to use ring magnets, you wouldn't need them quite far apart. But with these rather strong magnets, I do have quite a distance on here. And this was the best bit of wood I could find for the trial. And uh, the magnets are only just hidden by it. So if we were using these magnets, I'd want a wider piece of wood than this. Um, and if you were to have it up there, well then the hover distance, the levitation distance would be not terribly impressive. So what I'm going to do is make some cutouts here and sink those magnets into those cutouts. I don't have a quarter inch drill bit, these are quarter inch thick magnets, but I do have a quarter inch router, so I'm going to route out some little channels here and set these magnets into those. I've marked up my slot positions symmetrically and I've set this fence here for the first pair and then I'll move this fence for the second pair. I've set the height of the router bit to the correct height for the magnets in here and I've set the fence here for the correct depth in here. Now if I was to try and wrap that by hand it would chatter like crazy. I need to attach, where's my right angle, there it is, I need to attach an extra piece of wood here to help me hold it steady into the bit. Now attaching a temporary piece of wood, you could use hot melt glue which tends to be messy, you could use double sided or carpet tape which tends to be fiddly, but I'm going to show you a trick I saw on a luthier site, uh, Crimson Guitars, uh, I'll put a link to that down below, for attaching this cleanly and easily. You need some masking tape or painter's tape. You need some super glue or crazy glue or cyanoacrylate glue. And you need CA accelerator. And we put one piece of tape on our temporary board. Put another piece of tape on our workpiece. Then we put the CA glue on one piece.
It's rather a lot there, try and keep the nozzle from not clogging as long as I can. Accelerator on this piece. Bring the two together. Oh, I shouldn't have had so much excess over the other side. And just wait for them to catch. And then when you've finished, you can just peel this all away. Not a finished product, but uh, proof of concept.